Right, so thanks very much, everybody. Thanks to Aristides and, and colleagues in Spain for organising this meeting and, and giving me the opportunity to talk about machines for offshore renewables. So in the machines activity in Edinburgh, we have um, a number of people as I'm representing, not just myself, but also my colleagues, Costas Giftakis, Kwan Lee and Jonathan Sheck, um, who all, all work in various aspects of machines. I'm going to talk mainly about some of my work and, 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 and Costas's work, but also mention uh, Kwan Lee and Jonathan's work. We, we're supported by five uh, research staff at the moment. Uh, ben McGilton is now back to left, um, uh, but he's still working with us. Um, and we have about 20 PhD students working in, in this area. So machines at the University of Edinburgh, we mainly cover low speed, high torque machines, um, direct drive, uh, that's what I'm really interested in, or pseudo direct drive uh, using uh, magnetic gears. And I'll say something a bit more about magnetic gears later on. These machines are very large, um, heavy, requiring, producing huge amounts of torque. Uh, you can't just look at the electromagnetic design in isolation. You have to consider the full intricate design. So you have to consider the structural design, the thermal design. You also have to consider how you can actually manufacture and assemble these machines. And then finally, if there's a fault, how, how do you maintain them? So we very much adopt, uh, we've adopted very much a, an integrated design approach where we cover all these aspects. And I'll give you some, uh, some examples of, of how we've done that in, in, some, in some of the machines, the mach one of the machines was designed, which is called CGEM. Um, so we have, ex amongst those researchers we have, not, they're not all electrical engineers, some are mechanical engineers looking at doing, or some are electrical and mechanical engineers doing structural analysis uh, and, and also doing CFD. Um, some of the examples of the machines we're gonna look at are uh, the CGEM generator, We'll also look at a novel superconducting machine we're starting to develop and also magnetic gearings and multi-stat magnetic gears rather than the single stat magnetic gears that are around at the moment. I'll also talk a bit about condition monitoring machines, which is uh, Costas Giftakis' work. Uh, and finally, we do some work on component testing for marine renewables, because if you're gonna develop reliable um, machines for, for offshore, you need to make sure you understand the, the failure modes and components and, and to ensure reliability. So what, what we're looking at really is not just the machine, it's a complete drivetrain. Um, so we need to understand the, the, the drivetrain. So we we model not just the drivetrain, we model the power electronics, we model the interaction of the drivetrain with the device, whether it's a wind turbine, tidal turbine, or a wave device. So we, we're very much doing system modeling as well. And this is really what where, where uh, is Jonathan Sheck's work. And uh, we've done a lot of this work within um, European projects, in particular the TIPA project with Nova Innovation, where we um, ha have developed models of the generator, the power converter um, at a system level, uh, and then using system uh, results of the system model, we then drill down deeper into the into machine so we can look at um, the, the losses then, the losses then affect um, uh, the heat that's produced, which then it can affect um, insulation. Um, we look at the mechanical aspects, um, uh, which will then affect how bearings operate. Uh, and we've got detailed models which allow us to do that. And as an example of that, um, here we, we're doing, so taking electromagnetic models on the left-hand side, calculating the fluxes. From that, we can calculate the forces that are acting. If we can have problems with eccentricity, i.e. the rotors offset, or for example, we have a demagnetized magnet, what effect does that have? Um, we can then calculate the forces, feed those forces into a multi-body model, so we can see how the drivetrain then um, performs under these um, unbalanced forces that may be, may be occurring, and what impact that then has on structure, and ultimately, on, and also on, on things like bearing life. So we, we do work in that particular space, and again, a lot of that work is, is work that Jonathan Sheck does uh, at a system model level. I'm now going to talk a bit about um, a particular generator we've developed here, which we call a C-Gen. And we developed this really for direct drive systems, very large uh, multi-megawatt direct drive systems uh, with taking, trying not, not, not just looking at the performance or optimizing performance of the machine, but also think about other aspects such as assembly and, and operation and maintenance. So we came up with a, uh, an air cord machine. Uh, the reason why we went air cord is because we don't want, want any magnetic attraction forces within the air gap. 
that means it makes it easier for, to assemble the stator in, into the rotor. As a result of that, the benefit is there are no cogging torque either. So the, the stator is air cored, and we see a picture of that here, uh, where we see copper coils potted in epoxy, and that is then inserted into a rotor module which has permanent magnets on. And as we'll see in a minute, there we've got, we've got a, a video of assembly that there are no magnetic forces there, so we don't have to worry about assembly. This allows us to modularize the machine, so we can have uh, a number of modules. as a stator and rotor module shown in the second diagram here. We build up the machine with, with these modules. We can stack machines in the actual direction, so we can go from a one megawatt to six megawatt on the same shaft, um, just by simply uh, stacking our, 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 our machines. So we have a very high degree of modularity within this machine, which makes it easier to assemble and, and also easy to maintain. Again, as we'll show you later on, um, on, a, on a project we looked at for, for wave devices. The other aspect of this is like any opponent magnet machine, uh, we are able to show high efficiency over um, the operating range, particularly at part load where a lot of renewable devices are gonna be operating at, uh, spending most of their time. Where we're at with this machine is we've demonstrated it on a number of prototypes. Um, we've installed it on small wind turbines. Um, we have demonstrated it in the water for, for wave energy. And we've also su now supplied two generators to Motion Energy who will be testing their device in, in, in the water, uh, hopefully this year and, and or beginning of next year. So we're starting to develop the technologies patented um, and we're working with a number of companies to get the technology out there. Give you an indication of how easy it is to assemble. This is um, a assembly, which is speeded up, of a stator module into a rotor module, simply using an overhead crane and a cherry lift. I'll show that again, it was so quick. It actually took, real time takes nine minutes. Um, this is for a one mega machine that was built uh, a number of years ago. Um, this machine was built over a period of three months, first time ever built a one mega machine. Um, three months from component, component manufacture to final assembly. So it's a very simple, easy machine to build. It's highly scalable. So here we have a number of prototypes we've built. This is the, the first prototype, um, the 15, uh, sorry, 20 kilowatt machine. We then built a 15 kilowatt machine, which we put onto a, a wind turbine. Um, it's, it's back of the wind turbine, they're proven 15 kilowatt wind turbine, and, and that worked really well. We then went to a 25 kilowatt axial flux machine, um, multi-stage machine. And we scaled this 25 kilowatt machine up to one megawatt machine, one megawatt in one step. So it's a highly scalable machine. Um, that because of the fact we're using air cord windings, the manufacturing aspects are, are, in terms of scalability are, are not, not an issue as we have seen in terms of modeling the assembling the stator module into a rotor module. And we also built uh, so a 50 kilowatt linear machine we built. And that's a precursor of another machine which we built um, as part of all the, the uh, a project we call Project Neptune, which was um, funded by Wave Energy Scotland. And was, this was to really take uh, a, a linear machine and, and put it in the water and, and marinize it and run it fully flooded so we didn't have to worry about uh, complicated seals, but also demonstrate aspects of um, assembly demonstrate aspects of operation and maintenance. So we could do in situ operation and maintenance rather than have to take the whole machine out and, and disassemble it completely, which you would have a convention machine. Um, and also demonstrate a novel uh, bearing system that we have, which again would not require complicated seals that, that more conventional machines would have. So here we have the component manufacturer in terms of modules, the stator module, the, the, the permanent magnet module is, is made out of cast iron, so it's very, once, once, the, once the mold is produced, you can just run these machines off very quickly. Um, shows it being built, and here's the final machine, and, and there's a couple of people down here from, from Wares, in fact, Ian Begg from Wares, I'll give you an idea of the scale. Um, and here we tested at Leaf Docks. Um, here is the machine running. Um, it's basically, it's a, it's a linear motor to generate a, um, back to back test rigs. We've got a linear motor driving a, a linear generator. And again, it's the first time I've ever seen this kind of uh, test rig being built. We tested it, it inserted it into the dry dock, uh, which was flooded, um, uh, and tested it fully flooded over a period of, of three to six months. 
one of the things we wanted to do was, was um, show um, how we could um, do operation and maintenance. So suppose we had a faulty stator module, we could, we could take the machine out of the dock uh, and this is showing us actually replacing it. It took about, in real time, about 40 to 50 minutes from it being on the dock to, to replacing. And again, what we're simply using is an overhead crane and, and some manual labor to replace it. And once that module is replaced, we can then put it straight back in the water again. So you could imagine this being done offshore on a, on a, on a, on a ship with the right sort of cranage. And we can use cranage, uh, we can design the modules to use uh, the, 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 the cranage, the appropriate cranage on, on, on a ship. It doesn't require um, sophisticated equipment. We don't have to completely disassemble the machine. We're only doing part of the machine. So it, it makes it very quick and very easy. In terms of the bearings, we also demonstrated a, a novel bearing, which again, we were able to, to replace due through in maintenance. Um, and again, we did that in, in, in situ and by hand. So that, that gives you an indication of some of the stuff we've done on, on more conventional machines. And now we're looking at HTS machines and air cord machines. So the idea with the, one of the disadvantages with, with permanent mag machines is there's lots of iron in there. This is very mass dense um, material. Um, so we want to get rid of it, really, if we want to improve power density. I mean, the, typically the, the power density of a direct drive generator for wind turbine is only about 100 watts per kilo, which is pretty low when you consider that the, if for an industrial motor, the um, power density is about one kilowatt per kilo, but then that's running at 3,000 RPM or 1,500 RPM. So superconducting materials are, are, are seen as a way forward in this. Um, and what we were interested in doing is, is, is how can we get the benefits of modularity from the C gen, but improve the um, mass density. So this shows the flux density plot for a module in the C gen machine in the air gap round about here. Um, We've got flux flowing as shown, so go north, south, north, south, but in, in there where, where you have the, the core windings, we're getting an air gap flux about 0.5 Tesla. What we've got to do is increase that magnetic field. And what we came up with is a um, superconducting module where the, the, the sort of yellow coils are superconducting coils completely in air, so we've got rid of all the iron. The brown coils are just more standard copper coils that we have in the CGEN machine. And these superconducting coils are used to focus the flux using the same sort of flux pattern that we get in a in the CGEN machine. And if we look at the um, flux density analysis of that, again, in, in the air gap, uh, where we we're looking at earlier on, we're now getting a flux density about two and a half Tesla. So we've gone from 0.5 Tesla to two and a half Tesla. It's a factor of five. As a result of that, within the same volume of the one megawatt CGEN machine we, we, we built many years ago, we can produce five megawatts within that same volume using superconducting machines. So we, we instantly, we, we've got a, a, a massive increase in power density there. Uh, but to do that, we, we have to use this sort of arrangement. Um, more conventional superconducting machines will not achieve that kind of flux density because they're still using iron in there, so they're limited by that. This work, work is very promising, it's ongoing, um, and, and we're starting to develop it further. One other aspect we've been looking at are magnetic gears. Um, if you look at... Um, if you're going to a very large direct drive offshore wind turbines and you're going to much higher powers of 15 megawatts, say 20 megawatts, the speeds are getting much lower and direct drive then becomes much more challenging. And so companies like Siemens are looking at magnetic gears for, for, for um, what's called pseudo direct drive. If you look at wave energy, it's, it's even worse. The, 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 power den the, pa the velocities that are, you're seeing are very, very low indeed. So direct drive is just about possible, but it's very challenging. If we can somehow increase the speed a little bit, then, then, then we can make massive improvements and magnetic gears is one option and one of the big advantages of magnetic gears that we, we found is that they slip under excessive load so in a wave device if you get an extreme torque the whole thing slips out you're not causing any damage um, because there's no magnet there's no mechanical contact between the various parts we've done some work on magnetic gears and um, looked at uh, multi-stage magnetic gears and this shows an example of a magnetic gear system on a flap which we've tested in, in flow wave I'll, I'll talk a bit about condition monitoring very quickly. Um, machine faults occur due to broken rotor bars, uh, broken axial ducts, um, windings, uh, short of windings. We need to be able to monitor these. And my co colleague Costas Taxis works in this area. Um, and we do this by modeling 
we can look at how, what what impact the field has, what impact ro broken bone has on the field. The most common method is motor current signature net analysis doesn't always detect these. Um, so we have to use other methods such as um, uh, short-term Fourier transforms. Uh, and so we can then see compare healthy um, uh, line current signatures with faulty ones and, and see the big difference. And likewise with a music signature, the zero sequence currents got healthy and faulty. Um, and this is work that Costas does. More recently, he's been doing work on magnet generators, uh, particularly C-Gen, where you have a demagnetization, you have magnets demagnetized. Um, and, and so this, this picture here, this, this magnet over the, on the right-hand side is demagnetized. Uh, how do we detect for that? Well, he's developed a method, which we're just about to publish, where we have a search coil here. Um, and that will allow us to, 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 to um, find, uh, locate demagnetization. So is the um, healthy, healthy system, 40% demagnetization. We can look at the, the frequency signal here. Uh, and also as you increase the 18%, like to 80%, they get it's a clear difference. So we're, we're doing work on that, which is about to be published. And Costas worked with colleagues in Spain already and on, on condition monitoring, and we're keen to um, ex expand that collaboration into other areas of, of machines. So I'll leave it there. Um, and I'll hope, happy to ask, answer any questions.